Hello, everyone. My guest today is Jake Atwood. He's the founder and CEO of BuzzBuilder. He's also an author and speak, keynote speaker who's focused on helping companies discover new ways to attract customers and grow their business. He enjoys disrupting the status quo, and his eBooks and blogs have been read by more than 500,000 people worldwide. Jake, are you ready to take us to the top? I am. Let's have some fun. All right. What is BuzzBuilder, and how do you make money? BuzzBuilder is a tool for sales reps that helps them find new customers. So for both entrepreneurs and salespeople who don't like to cold call, don't like to prospect, are frustrated at chasing leads, it uses a combination of cold email campaigns and website analytics to help you locate the customers that want to buy from you, and then it helps you connect with them. And is this like, okay, I want to connect with the head of a head editor at Forbes, type in Forbes.com, and you'll spit out all the emails on that domain? That and then we help you identify people based on certain trigger events that might have a higher likelihood of needing your product. So if you're a recruiter, we can find companies through um, certain search tools that are currently hiring for positions on Indeed.com that you can fill. And then we'll give you their contact information and then help you with messaging through various email campaigns to reach out to them and connect and then start the conversation. Interesting. And what's your revenue yeah. model? Is it Pure Place Ass? Uh, it is per seat and it's basically a recurring revenue model on a monthly basis. Okay. And mm -hmm. on average, what, what do people pay per seat? Uh, average is about $115 per seat and about 51% of our user base are solo entrepreneurs. The other 50, 49% are, are small and mid-sized sales teams. That's great. And how many, how many of them are you serving today in terms of paid customers? We've got about 350 companies plus another 350 or so entrepreneurs. Okay. And, and so give me that in terms of seats. Uh, total seats is uh, just over about 1,500 seats today. Got it. Okay, wow. So that's mm -hmm. I mean, pretty, pretty yeah. healthy business. Now, I mean, can I take the 115 times 1,500 seats and generally back into a month recurring revenue of about 170 grand, or is that not accurate? Not quite, because we, we can't publish uh, our exact revenues to date because we're going to have some VC. But, you know, we've got some folks we've grandfathered in, obviously, from several years ago. At lower price points. Are, at lower price points, yeah. of course, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Are you generally, can we generally say you're north of a hundred grand a month? We're close. Okay. Yeah. You'll break it this month? Yes. Come on, Jake. Yes or no? You're yeah, going to break it this month? Absolutely. All right. We good. will break it this month. Yeah. Good. And next month and the month after. It's <laughs> good. How do you, how do you use, um, some of your kind of eBooks and your public persona to drive growth? So we've created eBooks around the certain buyer personas. Uh, we, we've actually mapped a lot of our customers to certain buyer personas using a tool called Crystal Nose. And it basically can scan people's social comments, their LinkedIn profile, and give you a disk personality for each person you're selling to. Or, What's or a disk personality? So a disk personality profile basically uh, – it, it measures people's personality in four quadrants without going into detail. Are you more of a get it done just to the point type of person? Are you more of a analytical person? Are you more of a social person? And based on that profile, we know number one, um, where to find them. And then number two, how to communicate with them most importantly. Interesting. What are you growing mm -hmm. out right now year over year? So we've got grown by 300% in the last three years. So just over, you know, hundred percent a year, year over year. Okay. Got it. So, so if you're doing around hundred grand today, what you're doing 50 grand 12 months ago and 25 grand, 12 months before that. About that. Yeah. That, I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty darn good growth. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all been from cash flow, and it's all been, uh, just, um, grinding it out. And now we're at the point where we're going to go after some venture capital. Uh, why are you bootstrapped right now? We are bootstrapped and you know, um, it's, it's not a good thing to be undercapitalized. And now we've got to the point where we've got the sales model figured out, the business model figured out. It's time to pour some gas in the fire. Is churn so, under control? control? Churn is under control. It could always be better, of course, right? What is it? Uh, it's, it's roughly, we've got about a 75% retention rate where when you're talking to entrepreneurs and sales reps, it's actually much higher than average. Yeah. So you're churning about 2% of your logos every month. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and why are they churning? Uh, a number of reasons. I mean, there's the obvious reasons such as, oh, I haven't used the tool or my business has changed. Um, you know, there are times when an entrepreneur might start the program and we give them all the help in the world. But, um, you know, certain people, uh, I think, just have a tough time adopting new technologies, new ways of thinking. Mm -hmm. And what is, you know, a lot of people when they look at onboarding and churn, they, they, they've identified a few things they know they have to get a new sign up to do to be sticky. What is the one thing you know you've got to get a new Buzz Builder user to do so they stick? The most important thing is they, they need to create their first campaign within the first seven days. 
And we know if they built their first campaign, the rest is gravy. And we help with everything. We help with the messaging, with templates to make sure they've got their first campaign built. And then there's all sorts of places they can grab contact lists from so they can then load those in and send the first campaign out. So ideally, we like to see them launch their first campaign within seven days. And what's your team look like today? And what percent, you know, how many people on your team are dedicated to that onboarding? So we've got uh, two people dedicated to onboarding. We've got a client success manager that handles a lot of the training. We've also automated a lot of the training. So we do weekly public training sessions. We've got a whole video library. We've got what's called Video uh, or Buzz Builder University. And we launched that recently where it's not just the technical training, but what we learned that people need and the number one reason they were failing with a tool like Buzz Builder, just failing to implement it, is because they lacked a process. And especially a lot of entrepreneurs, they really don't have a cohesive sales process. And so that was the goal is to help them understand, okay, not just the content, but when do I launch a campaign? How many people, how do I follow up effectively? How do I work through the objections I'm hearing and so forth? So what's your total team size today? So we've got 10 people on the team that are dedicated employees and a number of contractors and, uh, and folks we outsource to. Got it. And year one, when did you launch? We launched uh, officially, the beta went on for a few years, actually. I was a consultant, and in 2008, we launched the beta, and we officially launched the product four years ago. Okay, got it. So you would have launched in, what, 2013? Yeah. So what the hell happened between 2008 and 2013? That's like six years. Yeah, so I was a consultant. Basically, I was building the product for myself initially, and it was an idea. It was a product under the umbrella of a company called Ovation. And I was a consultant. I'd go out and I'd do a sales consulting job, uh, coaching them on how to generate leads more effectively. And one day I had the idea for the software, and I, I just hired a developer to kind of toy with it. And we, we kind of just kept working on it and tweaking it over the years. And we put it in front of a few clients and say, okay, how do you like it? What do you like? What don't you like? And I really built it through input from clients. Um, I learned early on the idea of build it and they will come only works in Field of Dreams. <laughs> so... We wanted to build a product that had a lot of input from clients. And then um, there came the day when I knew that I couldn't be doing the consulting and Buzz Builder. So in, in 2013 is when I closed on Ovation as the consulting business. I hired my first official How much employee, revenue had Buzz the consulting Builder. business done before you shut it down? Um, I was in about personally about 350 a year. Okay. And in consulting, you know, that it was just me. I was a solo consultant. Well, you basically took that to your bank. So, so that's what you're giving up. Yeah. And, you know, it was a leap. I, I, it's always one step back before you can take two steps forward, it seems like. So now today, yeah. in terms of getting new customers, what, what's your CAC? What are you spending to acquire these guys? Not much. You know, the thing is, we, we, we drink our own Kool-Aid. Um, our cost of acquisition is less than $200 per client. Okay. And is that because, per seat? No, that's per customer. So that would be, um, it's, it's a little less for going after solo entrepreneurs. It's more automated. Our cost for acquisition for entrepreneurs typically right now is, is less than $150. And you said per, it's split, uh, you said it's split 50, 50, right? So 50% of your, of your users, which you have, uh, let's see, 1500 yeah. of are solo folks. And then the rest are <clears throat> 150 kind of enterprises that pay what it sounds right. like that'd be like four or five seats on average each. Four, it's actually, yeah, four to five seats on average. Um, At 150 bucks average, a month. Yeah, so last year, our average customer between multi-user and solos was $4,900 for annualized. the annualized. Yeah. Yeah, so you're getting your pay, you, if you spend 200 bucks to acquire those guys, you're getting paid back in like less than two months. It's a healthy payback period. It is, and the, the majority of our leads come either from referral, from website leads through SEO, and then a large percentage of them come from outbound cold email campaigns that our team launches. So again, we drink our own Kool-Aid. That's great. And with the 2% yeah. uh, gross or logo, or, or sorry, logo uh, churn monthly, that means the average customer do one divided by that stays with you for about 50 months. Uh, do you back into mm-hmm. life cycle or, or uh, uh, life, uh, lifetime value? Sorry. Like, yeah, lifetime value. Yeah. Um, not so much. We're more interested in what the cost per acquisition is during the first month, we know that the gravy really is in month, uh, rather in year two and year three. But what and do you, that's what I'm asking. What do you assume lifetime value is on these guys? We assume we can keep the average customer for between 18 months to two years. And, you know, we're actually running an, another whole study on that because we've got some customers that have been with us for since day one for several years and others that are on board for two months and leave and we don't know why. Yep. Yeah. So there's more to be done there. So yeah. 24 months at 115 bucks a pop. That's, you know, almost a $3,000, you know, lifetime value per seat, obviously. Yeah. yeah. And as a result, we're actually now looking to spend more money. We're willing to spend a little bit more money for customer acquisition costs, especially going after the new, the, the solo entrepreneur market a bit more aggressively. So, so why are you raising, yeah. ca- why are you, ra- I mean, it sounds, I guess you're cash flow positive, right? 
We are. Uh-huh. Why are you? How much do you want to raise, and how did you come up with a number? Where would you spend it? No, we've done an, an amazing job developing a robust platform with with a very small team of developers. And so the first goal is going to be to hire more developers because I've got a list of ideas on a developer roadmap a mile long. And at the current pace, it'll take do. us years to get there, right? Yep. Um, and that's number one. And number two is we need to hire more sales reps and, and beef up our marketing. Uh, you know, right now, I don't want to say we're the best kept secret out there. A lot of people know about Buzz Builder, but um, – you know, we know there are some major competitors that are getting 30 and $40 million in VC. And, you know, if I look two years out, you know, if we want to stay ahead of them and stay ahead of the game, we need to, we need to have more capital. But Jake, so how much do you want to raise in an ideal world? So we're going to do two rounds. I don't need a lot. You know, we're pretty scrappy. We can do a lot of uh, damage with a low, small budget. So we're looking to do a half million dollar uh, first round, and that'll probably lead to a second round of anywhere from three to five million. And that first 500 will be debt, or you'll do it as priced equity, you think? No, we'll do it as uh, equity. We're going to do um, uh, initial crowdfunder round, it sounds like. We'll probably have $100,000 coming in from two or three investors that are private investors. And then uh, we'll bring those on board in the next couple of months, it looks like. And then at that point, we're going to do a second like uh, seed round for an additional four hundred thousand dollars at a bit higher equity. Got it. And what have for you high, va- for these early guys getting in? What have you valued the company at? How'd you have that conversation? So the valuation was was based on roughly a four x multiple on revenues. And then when we do the second round, it'll be based closer to the, to a six x multiple. Got it. Unrep- so four X would be. Yeah. I mean, I'm taking a hundred grand a month multiplied times twelve, one point two million. You're talking about a four or five million dollar pre money valuation. Yeah, exactly. So, yep. so yep. let me ask you an interesting question. If someone came to you and said, "Hey, I'll write you a four million dollar check to buy the whole company," right? Which makes you, I think, it's a pretty interesting life event for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Would you? Why not just take a deal? Would you take a deal like that? Uh, well, my wife and I had that. Con- we've had that conversation a couple of times. Would and she kill you if you said then- no? <laughs> um, a year ago, maybe. But, you know, we've we've talked about this and the industry is so big and it's still in its infancy that the upside is is enormous. And four million dollars. It's very competitive, though. It's very competitive. It is. So, you know, I think in five years, um, it's going to be a very different field of the industry. So that's the other reason we're raising capitals. We do have a plan to grow this up, explode it. and, And then in five years, have an exit strategy. Or potentially sooner if we get someone that comes along that gives us a really, really good uh, price. Interesting. So you would not take yeah. the sure thing. You would not take a three, $4 million offer today. No, I got to think big. <laughs> Interesting. I tell you what, there's a lot of people I've worked with. They'll say, Nathan, I didn't want to take the $980 million offer because I wanted the billion dollar thing to put on my LinkedIn profile. And you know what they did? 10 years later, they're selling for 5 million bucks because it failed miserably. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm always yep. a fan of hit the singles, hit the doubles because it requires way too much luck to go be the next Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, and we don't have aspirations or any desire to go to a billion dollars. I've got a number in mind that once it gets past that number and that number of employees, come on, Jake, I'm what is it? Probably not having fun anymore. You know, let me just say we we know of a couple of companies that have sold for between thirty and forty million dollars in our industry recently. Name one, and that's got a good well tout app for one. So they, tout, they app won't get- tout app did not sell for between thirty and forty. They sold for five million dollars after raising sixteen million. It was a total wash for everybody. Mm, total wash. Okay, so I was giving misinformation. So. You know, this is where it's interesting. We're we're growing fast. We're very competitive. I feel like we're doing a good job outselling the rest of the industry right now too. And at the point where we see that it's it's going to be a different game, it's ready to it's time to sell. Interesting. Well, we'll yeah. see what we'll see what happens. We'll have you on hopefully once per year between now and then and stay up to date, all right? Yeah. All right. I look forward to it. All right, Jake, let's wrap up here with the famous 5. Number 1, what's your favorite business book? Um I'd say how I raised myself from failure to success in sales. I think any good businessman really knows how to understand sales. That is a long ass title for a book. That's a long, long name. Say it, man. Again. it was written a hundred years ago too. How I raised myself from failure to success in sales. It's about selling. It's about perseverance. It's about okay. entrepreneurship. Yeah. Number two. And where are you based again? Location wise? Minneapolis. Okay. You know, name the last CEO I, you went out to dinner with in Minneapolis. Uh, actually the last CEO was, uh, uh, April Davis actually. And of all things, she owns an executive matchmaking service. Oh, inter- <laughs> are you, are you, well, you said you have a wife, right? Yeah. I'm helping her with her business. So we oh, talked, she formed an executive round table and I don't like to surround myself with just people that run businesses exactly like mine. I want to have some diversity and it's amazing how you pick up ideas from people that sell to a completely different audience than you do. Oh, to- okay. It's not, it's not yeah. trying to match up. 
single executives no, with each no, other to no. get married. It's to facilitate no. intros. Got it. Okay. Right, right. Number yeah. three, besides your own, what's your favorite online tool? Uh, right now, I'm just really loving using, uh, well, there's a number of tools. Gosh, Crystal Nose has got some really interesting things we're doing with buyer personas right now. And that's going to be the inroad to the next level of hyper-personalization with messaging, I think. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Six. Okay, that's good. And what's your situation? <laughs> when my three-year-old's not waking us up for Is it just one kid? We've got two, actually. But the nine-year-old, she's good to go. <laughs> All right. And how old are you, Jake? I am 43. Last question. Take us back to your 20-year-old self. What do you wish he knew? Ah, uh, I wish I knew how to focus better, be hyper-focused, because I was a guy with a million ideas, and it's not about having the ideas, it's about having the execution. Focus better. There you guys have it from Jake, launched Buzz Builder back in 2008 as an idea for himself when he was consulting. Finally got serious about it in 2013, quit the $350,000 consulting gig, launched his own company himself. Now he's up to 10 people, totally bootstrapped. He's serving about 1,500 customers, paying 50, 115 bucks a seat. So doing about 100 grand per month in revenue, 2% logo churn per month, 24% obviously annually, spending about 200 grand, sorry, 200 bucks to acquire a customer. Really healthy payback period. Now looking potentially at going out and raising company, but it, raising capital, but again, bootstrap today, again, helping folks with outreach, automation, and conversions to drive sales. Jake, thank you so much for taking us to the top. Thank you, Nathan. Been a pleasure.